And how does the philosophy of Suggestopedia translate into the games? Well, the main purpose of a Suggestopedic game is to teach the information in a multimodal, multi-sensory way. Uh, to do this in a way which is tactile, so we're involving all of the senses, and also to create emotional uh, landmarks. I'll give you an example here. Um, let's say that I am... I'll just turn this around a bit. Let's say that I'm teaching how to make questions in English, okay? Mm -hmm. So, how far do they go? Okay. So first of all, I ask the students, I give out the cards, four cards per student. I ask the students to make a, um, uh, a sentence, uh, a question. Now, if the person makes a mistake, which is quite common in Bulgarian students and French students and students from other languages, instead of saying how far do they go, they might say how far they do go, which means that they're lighting the match, uh, sorry, the matchstick is lighting the dynamite rather than the birthday cake, okay? Okay. And they immediately realize that that isn't a possible order, okay? So we quite quickly get the order. The interrogative word. Okay. The, uh, sorry, the interrogative word, the auxiliary, the subject, and then the verb. And I say, and I say, the, cake. the verb can change, but nothing else can change. The dynamite. <laughs> oh, how okay. Far oh, do okay. They go. Okay. Yes, do I they see. go? Okay. Now let's say that the next one is right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we'll have why um, is. Excuse me. Why is. She, and then you have right, and of course, the right has to agree with the is, which means that the question will be, why is she writing? Okay. Okay. All right. Now, let's, we don't have much space on this particular table. I usually do this on the ground, on the floor, um, but okay, let's stay like this. Okay. Um, how far do they go? Okay, and why is she writing? As soon as we change, as soon as we change the the cake, the birthday cake, we're going to change. Probably, we're going to change the um, the form of the verb. So now, instead of do, we have has. Hmm. So instead of how far do they go, it's how far has it. And this has to be column three, gone. Every time we change a birthday cake, we change the whole structure of the sentence. Is this clear? And let's say this one is over here. Why is she writing? I put this down here and it will be, why will she write? And if I change, if I change this again, how far has it gone? How far was it going? And this one here will be, not why will she write, but why am I writing? Okay. And it goes on like this. Instead of was, how far was it going? How far did I go or they go? And okay. here, why? Sorry, and this one here, which was why am I writing? Now becomes why have you written? and so on. And so we draw three conclusions from this game. The first conclusion is that the order will always be the same. Mm -hmm. Interrogative word, uh, auxiliary, subject, and verb. The second conclusion is when the birthday cake changes, in other words, when the auxiliary changes, the form of the verb changes. And the third one, the third conclusion is if you have the auxiliary to be your verb will be ing. If you have the auxiliary have, it'll be the third column of the past participle. 
And if it's anything else, you just leave it alone in the present. <laughs> and that's all of English grammar in th two and a half sentences finished. Okay, I'm impressed. Good. Good. That's one game. Okay, I'll show you other things. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And every game that we play should amaze the students because they've done things that they didn't think that they could do. For example, I have another game where people have to remember 12 objects in a row. It's a ball game. I throw the ball to someone. I say, I like airplanes. The person says, Lonnie likes airplanes and I like um, chocolate. Throws it to a third person. Third person says, Lonnie likes airplanes. Um, Maria likes uh, chocolate. And I like, um, I don't know, dolphins. And we go on. Now, it's, it's fine right up until six or seven, but starting around number seven or eight, the people who have to come back, have to restitute all of the, the ob objects and so on, are su surprised because they're able to remember absolutely everything. They have to remember the order in which the ball was received, the name of the person, and the object uh, that the person um, really likes. And when you get to around nine or ten people, everybody's amazed, sort of like, I never thought that I could actually remain, uh, remember uh, eight or ten or twelve uh, objects like that. So what we're getting people to do is to redefine what their capacities are, and through the redefinition of their capacities, uh, we're also getting them to redefine who they are. Mm because they're not as limited as they thought they were. Sure. Something else here. <clears throat> to learn the verbs, I might actually distribute all of these cards to different people. Okay. And then they have to get together and it's, it's a game of families. They have to find the other forms of the verb. This is eat. Okay. So they're going to need eight and eaten, okay? Okay. Right. Um, and so they'll have to find whoever it is who's got eight and whoever it is who's got eaten. Now, you'll notice that the cards are all color-coded. The yellows are the present. The okay. reds are the past. And the oranges are a mixture of the yellow and the red because it's a present perfect, which means that it's both present and past. And if you mix r yellow and red, you're going to get orange. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Okay. Okay, and so once we've done that, we've done the game part of the activity, I then pretend that we're just going to put the cards away very, very quickly, and I say, okay, can you tell me what the next card is? Eat. We would expect them to say eight. Eight. Good, and I'll say, oh. and then, and, <laughs> eat <'em. laughs> and eaten, and then I say, extraordinary, you've got extra, extra um, sensory intelligence here in this group, okay? Okay. All right, and what about this one here? Keep? And then we would expect them to say kept. Yes, and absolutely, then, okay. and can you tell me what the next card is? Kept. Amazing, you can tell me what the future is, you can okay. tell me what the next card is going to be. Wow. Did, okay. Okay, and so okay. on and so forth, okay? Now, the reason I do that is because people learn the most when they think that they aren't supposed to be learning. When we're in the actual game part of the activity, uh, they expect uh, that they're doing lots of things, they're moving, and it's going well. But when I just pretend to be putting the cards away, but running through it before I put them away, they're almost off their guards. And so all of the information goes in in a uh, much more intense way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there'd be that one. Have I got anything else that's really worth seeing? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, There's a pile over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, big one, there's that, and there's also another one that I had. Um, yes, this one's for beginners. Okay, let's see, <clears throat> let's get rid of this. Okay. Okay, so these here are verbs. Okay. It's, it's like a game of cards which children enjoy called war where if I've got a five and you've got a three, I yes. take the three and okay. I keep it. If you have a jack and I've only got a seven, then it's you who get it next time, okay? So it's based on that sort of idea, except there are no winners or losers, just winners, okay, here, okay? okay. And you ask a yeah. question, okay? So you ask a question, here okay. and usually, okay? Well, right. Okay, it should be something... And you make a question, you? you make a question like, what do, do you... you 
We're usually here. Good. Oh, okay. And now we've got by. By. Mm -hmm. And then we've got now. And your now. question will be? What are we buying now? Exactly. And we have a whole series of things, a lot of cards with a lot oh, of okay. verbs and everything. But even in these first two, you get an overview of how the thing works. You're supposed to identify that usually is not now, and so it's the present simple. Oh, and okay. by, by is now, and so it's the present uh, continuous, mm -hmm. which means verb ing. Okay. And <coughs> this is something we play with very, very low-level uh, people, but it gets it clear, because what I've noticed is that even people who speak English fluently, uh, very often people like the Dutch, they may... Um, still get this systematically wrong. Um, so we might as well get this right immediately. Because for us, in English, there is no um, possible confusion between um, do and doing. For example, uh, if you say, what are you doing? I'll say, I'm speaking to you. Uh, what do you do? I have breakfast, but I'm not having breakfast now. Mm. Okay, etc., etc., okay? okay? So that would be another game. We'd all be on the ground, and we'd be working away with these little cards and so on. Okay? Mm -hmm. So those are the main games. I've got other ones as well. Uh, I've got psychological training uh, things, uh, which, which have nothing to do with the actual language learning, but it's the training of teachers who are going to be suggestopedic people. They have okay. to be much more... Uh, attuned to uh, what's actually going on. Um, so, for example, uh, mm -hmm. okay, describe what... Uh, yeah, so you get an orange card, oh, okay. which is just an ordinary <clears throat> communicative card, and you're supposed to talk about... Okay, describe what for you an ideal holiday might be. Okay, right. Okay, and <coughs> you have no idea what I've got in my blue card. No idea. Okay. But this blue card tells me my secret attitude towards you. So while I'm listening to you, I can't speak, but I'm listening to you, but I'm going to give off vibrations which are going to make it easier okay. or more difficult for you to communicate. Okay. Okay. Now I've got some... So while, I d while I'm describing my ideal holiday, you mm -hmm. would be interacting with me. Not at all interacting, just no. sitting there inside my mindset. Mm -hmm. and we'll see the impact that it has on you, okay? For example, the instructions that I've got is, you're fascinated, but the person is going much too slowly for your oh, okay. lightning-fast mind, and you can't stand it. I and normally what will happen in that particular situation is, without my doing anything, you will feel my impatience, and you will slow down and begin to forget what you're talking about. <laughs> because it's my impatience. Okay. I've got other ones. Um, you know this person's boss. He doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be fired tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You feel incredible pity. And that's also going to have a, a strange effect on what you're talking about. And so basically this section of the teacher training, uh, teacher training seminars that I do in order to train uh, people to be able to use Suggestopedia is on the increase of our perception of what's happening in a, um, in a communicative situation. I spend a lot of time making teachers much more sensitive so that they just pick up what it is that's happening. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, so those are all the games. I've got hundreds of games, but I think that's enough for this particular um, okay. thing. Thank you so much for showing this. Sure. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. A pleasure.